Maybe a little more. How would the Argentinians say it? Save it, give it to your grandma. Is it hot in here or is it this hat? Hi, and welcome to What's in My Glass. I'm Andy, and this week we're talking about affordable red wine and how to pair it with cheese for the holidays. Welcome back. So if you've not seen part one, uh, we did this crazy experiment with some white wine and cheese for the holidays. I will have the link to that below. But if red wine's more your thing, I've got you covered. I went down to my local liquor store this week and I grabbed four affordable red wines and I had in mind a few ideas of what I wanted to do for pairing today, but I really let price dictate. So all of these bottles are under $12. Up first, and I know I'm gonna butcher the name of this. <laughs> This is a dry red wine from Hungary. Oh God, it's so bad. Szekeszardi? It's the S and a Z. That is really hard. Szekeszardia. Szekeszardia. Sure. They are claiming it is a well-balanced, harmonious red wine with pleasing fragrance and a light, spicy aroma. Best enjoyed with beef, pork, lamb, and cheese. Perfect cheese. So the tasting notes that I read online before purchasing this wine, uh, highly recommended it because it was really well balanced. Um, it had some really nice cherry flavors to it. To me, that kind of seemed like a little Pinot Noir-y in style without the Pinot Noir price tag. So instead, we looked outside of the traditional kind of grapes and went a little crazy. Cherry, licorice, a little earthiness on the nose. Medium bodied. Definitely some acidity there. I can see those spicy notes as well in there. Again, this week our cheeses are from Dover Cheese Shop. For this Hungarian wine, I chose a sheep's milk cheese. It is from Mariposa Dairy and it's called the Tanya. Tanya? Tanya? It's aged for eight months and it's made entirely from sheep's milk. It's supposed to have a mild but sweet nutty flavor. Nice nutty cheese, really great texture to that. Not too creamy, not too hard. That's gonna be a fan favorite for sure. And with the wine, that's lovely. You know what? The wine's not too heavy, the cheese is not too heavy. They match each other in terms of body. The nuttiness in this kind of plays nicely with the spiciness in the wine. Yeah, very happy with that. This wine right now is $9. This is a, a really great value wine. Up next, this is a Italian red wine. It's from Citra. Slightly darker color. This is their Sangiovese. They're saying deep red color. Yes, uh, medium to full bodied. Appealing bouquet, red fruit and spice, long lingering, tannic and well balanced. The perk companion to meat, rich sauces, game, and cheeses. That's yummy. Really juicy. Big, fresh acidity, especially on the finish. A little tannins playing around there. A little smoky and earthy. Italian wine, Italian cheese. This is a pecorino with truffles. To me, this is almost like fancy Parmesan. Um, it even smells of that truffle already. Not overwhelming. Really great crumbly texture. Next, Merlot. I'm not a big fan of Merlot to begin with, but all the research I did told me that this was a really great value and I know people tend to gravitate to stuff that they know. Merlot, very familiar, a lot of some kind of mocha, chocolate, um, coffee bean flavors to that. This is the Trapeche Reserve Merlot. This is their 2015 vintage. It is from Mendoza, Argentina. Now I chose a Merlot specifically because we have the Bellavitana Merlot cheese. This is consistently one of my favorite cheeses and every time I serve it, people love it. Source from the foothills of the Andes Mountains, where a combination of the altitude and generous sunshine produce concentrated aromatic fruit. That's true, but that sounds like something out of a made for TV movie. So it's aged note for nine months, which they're saying adds Finesse, harmony, and complexity. Oak does not equal complexity, but okay. Deep purple color, yep. Cherries, prunes, coconut, cinnamon, chocolate, and tobacco. Now that sounds like a party. Served with roast meat, chicken, hard cheese, and pasta. I can see that for sure. Self cheers. Big, bold, chocolatey, rich layers. For that style of wine, that's a bargain. And now the cheese. Hmm. Merlot and Merlot, you can't really go wrong. Well, I guess you can, because there's a lot of horrible Merlot. This cheese has a really dynamite texture, um, really great kind of subtle wine flavor to it. It's nothing crazy, but with the wine itself, it is really yummy. Okay, so last. Why do I consistently pick wine that I cannot pronounce the name of? Abacoa? 
Obikawa. Obikawa. Yeah, I'm going to say it confidently. Obikawa. This is Obikawa 2016 Shiraz. Let's see. Nice deep red color, like plum burgundy color. Lively, ruby red, red berries and spices. Medium bodied, well balanced wine. Can be enjoyed with all red meat dishes. All of them, guys. All of the world's red meat dishes. This can be enjoyed with. Yeah, it's juicy, fresh, lively. It's got some nice chalky, um, chocolatey tannins to that. Way more grip than I would have thought of for something so inexpensive. It's a crowd pleaser for sure. And this is a really good value option. We have something a little special. This is only available in the holiday season, I believe. Um, so if you can find it at your local cheese shop, buy it now. It is the Applewood Smoke. It's a nice mellow, creamy Scottish cheddar with like a subtle smokiness to it. You guys know I love something festive and this cheese comes coated in a red wax. Mm. This is like a Canadian Lumberjack's dream cheese. Mmm, mm-hmm really soft creamy cheese and really smoky not like standing in a bar in new york city in 1994 smoky like nice traditional wood chip smoky that's it for this week i hope you enjoyed these holiday red wine and cheese pairing suggestions and now that i've done the 90 year old lady thing of leaving my red lipstick on all these wine glasses we're done cheers guys